Sandy, how would you describe who you are in one sentence? Uh, I'm a broadcaster, and I worked for Doug at ARC from 1976, 1973 to 1976. And what is ARC? Uh, the Augmentation Research Center at SRI. And what do they do at ARC? <laughs> they augment human intelligence. That's, that was Doug's uh, group there. And how do you go about augmenting human intelligence? Well, uh, you hire people like me who, I was a, in graduate school as a communications and English major who know nothing about technology, and uh, you put people like me in charge of communicating with the outside world, which was my job, for the group. Did you work closely with Doug? Um, I did at first, because the first six months I was hired as an admin, so I was you know, out of graduate school. And that's how it was for women in those days. You came in through the back door, and then a few months later I was promoted to writer and communicator for them. Do you have any interesting or amusing anecdotes about Doug? <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm kinda, I did further graduate work as a cultural historian. So I am more interested in what it was really like to work there and what kind of group Doug actually created. And he created a wonderful community and a, a, he's all about collaboration. And um, we had the most amazing group and as Anne Duval was saying, we all, many, most of us are still in touch and we see each other on a regular basis. And it was a very bonding group, and we did lots of things together, and we had a lot of fun. So one of the things, but, you know, like, lots of fun. But w one of the things that is fun about Doug is that he was on the board of directors of EST with Werner Erhard. And he wanted everybody at ARC to attend EST. Now, you've probably heard about this. <laughs> so I, I'm always interested in trying anything, so I, I did it. Harvey Leitman said, I'm not going no matter what anyone says, but I and a bunch of other people went. And w the best thing that came out of it was I learned how to meditate in 1973, which has served me my whole life. There was a lot of other funny stuff, but the other thing was a lot of us who went changed our names. So my name was Sandy Johnson, and as a result of getting the rebirth experience of Est, I became Sandy Miranda. Um, some of the other members of the group, Gene North became Reddy Dively, and people changed their names. So this was one thing that Doug, extracurricular activities that came out of Doug's group. There were also overnights at the beach uh, where we took mescaline and things like that to broaden our horizons. But there were a lot of fun things. You know, there was, there was always wine and beer in the refrigerator. And one of our members who's passed away had a towel that he put under his door and there'd be lots of spliffs in there and you know there was plenty of fun things going on and picnics and off-sites and a lot of camaraderie. Would you say that Doug was a man of many interests? Well you know I didn't really know Doug that well because he I was taking care of my job was called feedback and my job was we, were, we had all these research organizations and others that were on using our system, and they would send an email to me if they had a question about how the whole thing worked. And my job was to run around to the different engineers and say, what should I tell so-and-so at BBN or at MIT or wherever it was? What should I tell them? And the engineers would explain to me, well, tell them that in this kind of hierarchical structure, such and such a thing won't work or, you know, whatever. So my job was... And I was an interpreter from the, because I was not a technologist at all, I was an English major. So I would take what they told me and transform it into something that I could tell the, the clients of, of the system. Do you have a favorite memory of Doug, something that really stands out? Um, he, well, he used to always call me kid. And whenever he'd see me for 20, 30 years later, he'd always go, hey, kid, how are you doing? But Doug would sponsor the group. We had, um, well, my favorite memory of him, of him was how spacey he was. Because he was always thinking, you know, and he'd, be, he'd sit in his office and he'd be like in a trance almost. You know, I think his mind was not like many other people's mind. 
because when you, you'd see him in there, he, he'd just be in another world a lot of the time, seemingly, and inventing the future. You know, and I ended up going to work at Apple in the early days of before they were public, you know. I was one of the early employees at Apple. And I called up and several of the people who worked there, or they would call me and say, should we come to Apple? This was later. And I'd say, how soon can you get here? But Apple took a lot of Doug's ideas and turned them into what we're all using now. So, What do you think he'll be most remembered for? I think he'll be most remembered for his, um, he'll probably be most remembered for the mouse, but that's not what he should be most remembered for. It's more like, to me, hyperlinks and our hierarchical structure and all that is more important, but it's really the collaboration, because Doug didn't mean for each person to have their own Mac and not talk to anyone else. He meant for people to work on the same stuff at the same time and collaborate in real time using the technology. And to, he was to bring the human element into it. And we've gotten very isolated from each other. And I think that when we bring that human element back in and bring the, fa you know, the, the cohesiveness of the group back in, that people will have really gotten what he left, left for us, the legacy. OK. Is there anything else you'd like to add about Doug? Um, well, I have a lot of funny stories, but we'll tell those a another time.